the Supreme Court completely cleared President Trump of any wrongdoing. He is no longer to be called an insurrectionist. Okay, the Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision, said Donald Trump is not an insurrectionist. He did not lead an insurrection. He did not take part in an insurrection. He's not an insurrectionist, and he could be on the ballot because federal law prohibits insurrectionists against the federal government from running for federal office. So there, boom, it's it's it. Incredible. You know, this whole, <laughs> you know, I got a call this morning uh, from a guy on the radio, and he kept saying that Trump was an ins- insurrectionist. And I, and I said, no. He said, I've been lying, right. saying Trump's not an insurrectionist. This is before the Supreme Court ruling. And I said, it's not me that says Donald Trump was not an insurrectionist or didn't lead an insurrection. It's Joe Biden's Justice Department. Joe Biden, Merrick Garland, not one single person mm-hmm. has been charged, tried, or convicted of insurrection. And the guy's like, you're lying. I can't be. And, and I said, I understand it's hard to believe. You know, these liberals, they get all the news from Rachel Baddow, right? I said, I understand it's hard for you to believe that because people say it all the time, but it's true. He wouldn't believe me. So I told him that – I said, hey, listen, do your own research. Google, do some Googling and do your own research, and you'll, you'll find out I'm right. And the Supreme Court ruling I, – I knew that this is how the court was going to come out because you know, we, when, they, when they had the Supreme Court hearings on this, this Colorado case a few weeks back, you and I both watched it. We got to hear it all live. Yep. And you could hear that even Biden's pick, Katanji, who's got it – it sounds like a stripper, Katanji – Katanji even was was going after the Colorado attorney on this. And I and I we talked about it on the podcast that day. The Supreme Court is going to rule in Trump's favor. Yep. Now we got this nine and O decision. And if you turn on the mainstream media, they've already moved on like it was a non event. They're today. not even talking about it. I was just yeah. checking. They now, if, of course, if it was the opposite they would be talking about it for weeks and weeks. Constitutional crisis because all yeah. the ballots have been printed. They're not. And tomorrow's Super Tuesday. They're not going to attack Katanji. They're not going to attack a white, I mean, a black liberal uh, justice at all. They're not going to do that. And because it was unanimous um, and all the liberal justices, which is so amazing to me, that's so fantastic because it really hits home that what they're these states were trying to do is unconstitutional but now we have uh this wonderful guy raskin i just sent you the article who, the guy who oh, he, who's yeah. fat battled cancer even though it's his battle is over he still wears a rag on his head yeah. i thought he was a, a surgeon because he had like this thing on his head all the time his hair's grown back and he's still wearing that thing yeah. um he said that now the 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 congress is going to try to do it legislatively they're going to ignore the Supreme Court ruling, the highest court in the land, and they're going to try now to remove him through the congressional Good. legislation. Do it, you know. And I, and I'll tell scum. you, here's here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. Now I know if you, how can that happen if, if the Supreme Court rules? Isn't that um, a, isn't that it? It's a done deal. Well, they, that, you know, Congress could do whatever they want. You know, if you when this decision came out today, if you were watching CNN and MSNBC, they they looked physically ill. They looked like they wanted to vomit on the oh, air. Oh, oh, yeah. They, were, they just want to forget it even happened. They were so and yeah. and right away before Raskin even said this, they were talking about legislatively, legislatively. It's like this had already been talked about and 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 I say bring it on because you know the the American people are behind this guy. Yep. They want Donald Trump. And the more they the the more that the the uniparty, the Democrats, the the permanent Washington class, all these the more they do this stuff, the more popular Donald Trump is going to be, and it'll make it that much easier for us to take our country back from these radical loons. So let them try to legislatively. This is I mean, I want you guys to think about what they're doing here. Not only did the Supreme Court clear President Trump of anything involving taking part in an, an insurrection against the government, or they would have said he could stay off the ballot in Colorado. Uh, that, that committee with uh, Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney's kangaroo committee yep. cleared him. He was cleared by Joe Biden and Merrick Garland's FBI cleared president Trump. I mean, how many times has this guy got to be cleared? 
And these the this permanent Washington class, that's what Tucker calls them, the permanent Washington class, they just cannot accept the fact no. that the American people don't want them, that they want Trump. Well, they just can't accept it. They had a guy on CNN today because I really wanted to see their reaction. And he said, you know, he <laughs> it was very telling. He said, sometimes you just can't save the people from themselves. Yeah. But this was a That's supreme, this, this is how liberals think. They have an urge to control. They think they're better than everybody. Right. And they think they're saving us from ourselves. But this is the Supreme Court that ruled on this. These are highly educated attorneys, judges, and it was unanimous, unanimous. They cannot admit that, that they were, that the Supreme Court did the right thing. And they cannot admit that Trump has a right to be on the ballot because this is another one of their schemes that has fallen apart, uh, that didn't work. It's just amazing how much energy and time, you know, you have all these cities going to hell, falling apart, right? These guys spend all their time and energy and effort into trying to stop Trump from getting back in the White House. They've been trying to stop this guy from day one. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would it be like for their constituents if they actually put their energy into making their cities a better place? They don't care about the constituents. If they, if no, they don't. They care about the donors. It's just amazing to me, the, the money and the time and the effort and the, the endless discussions and the, the waste of hot air on this, they must be so frustrated. It's like they just cannot get the break that they want. They can't get the resolution that they want. And uh, now that this has happened, I don't know what they can do through the legislation, but that's going to fall apart too. Mm. But Trump will be on the ballots. And and from what I read, it said this is this is a death blow. Like, let me get, let me give an this, example to this trying you know, to do what, this, what, that these states cannot do this. So, now. you know, we, we don't usually do this, but we're doing it today just because of this incredible nine to zero decision, completely clearing Trump of any insurrection. Okay. Yeah. By the Supreme court. We have uh, Fox news on while we're podcasting to see if they do. They're doing a story on heart attack risks with with it's marijuana incredible. smokers right now. Yeah, that, and I was on CNN, that, and they, they were doing a story about a basketball team. Yeah, these are filler stories yep. when there's no news. That's you plug right. In. If, it's incredible. If the Supreme Court would have ruled in Trump's favor, but it was at 9-0, right, and the Democrats were against Trump, but we still won it, they'd be talking about it all day and they would be tr- try to discredit the court and That's talk about exactly right. and talk about Biden getting more appointees and Well they this. they set up that groundwork all week all all week or last week uh you know they announced yesterday this decision was coming today and last week on the view and all these other shows all they did was talk about how the supreme court has become an arm for Trump and that they should recuse themselves they shouldn't be voting on this Blah, 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 because he appointed these people that they shouldn't be allowed to. That's not in the Constitution. And now all of them voted for Trump for Trump's favor. And now crickets, crickets. And that's what they do. Moving on. Nothing to yeah. see here. Let's and, move on to the next story. And by they're the not going to let him have his victory. This this ruling doesn't just apply to Colorado. It applies to all states. So not a single state could take him that's off right. the ballot. That's right. It says states. The and, Supreme Court said states cannot ban Trump and they also from said, the ballot. That's right. No states. And they also said. That um, now these the different justices, even though the Supreme Court ruled in favor, different justices gave opinions, even though they all ruled the same way on, on, on their thoughts on things. And one of the things that the Supreme Court said today, and they were referencing all these lawfare cases against Trump, that they need that things need to be cooled off a little bit, that the things are that the tensions are too high yeah. and that these lower courts, all courts are lower than the Supreme Court. These lower courts need to cool things down a little bit. And that means dismiss all these these cases. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you. I agree. I'll tell you this. OK, I will tell you this. This is this is such a beautiful thing. Now, those of you that listen to me in the mornings on the radio, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what tomorrow's show is going to be. I, you know, I don't plan the shows out in advance. Usually what I do is, is I get up in the morning. I do my show prep. I go through the news. 
And what is in the news that day is what the topic will be in the, uh, on the topics I'll discuss on the show. And I'll do that tomorrow. But tomorrow on the radio will be a day of celebration and gloating. Trump can no longer be called. Anyone who calls him an insurrectionist is going against even the Democrat members of the Supreme Court. The Democrats on the Supreme Court agreed with the Republicans on the Supreme Court that Donald Trump is not an insurrectionist. He did not take part in an insurrection, and he did not lead an insurrection. That's what that decision means, okay? Uh, and if you don't accept that, you're lying, and yep. you're going and you against the Democrats on the Supreme Court that were appointed by Obama, appointed by Biden, and I've forgotten who else appointed the uh, Democrats. Maybe it was just the two of them that's left up there. <clears throat> well, so so the, tomorrow's the, a day of gloating. Yes, and the media will not let Trump have his victory, so— yeah, but uh, we will. Brian's going to have it on his show, yeah. and uh, we talked about this today in the car, and, and is going to encourage people to call in and congratulate Trump and let him have his victory lap and make it a show all about congratulating Trump, because we know the Trumps listen to your morning radio show, um, and, yeah, and, and, and call in with your congratulations. Uh, and, I think that would be exciting and, to have that show. And tomorrow's Super Tuesday. The pres- oh, even better. The president's at home at Mar-a-Lago. Now, um, I, I tell people this a lot. A lot of times people will support and vote for someone just because they're a Republican. And just because someone says they're a Republican – just because they're registered as a Republican and just because they're running as a Republican doesn't mean they are a Republican. Listen to this. The uh, chairman of the Republican Party of the state of New York, his name is Ed Cox, spelled C-O-X, right? Listen to this. This is in the uh, Gateway Pundit. New York State GOP chairman Ed Cox has been exposed. He's a progressive Green New Deal double agent. Of Listen course, to this. That's how it works. This is the head of the G- of the Republican Party of New York State. Wow. Ed Cox, a donkey in elephant's clothing, they write. It's been discovered that Ed Cox at COX. Where is this article? The Gateway Pundit. Oh, yeah. uh, who is chairman of the New York Republican State Committee, sits on the board of League of, of Conservative Voters, which controls a network of at least five political action committees all registered as liberal and attached to a broader national network of far-left mm. super PAC, including the Beat Trump Climate Unity Fund. The mission of these PACs is to support Democrat and far-left politicians like the squad, Tlaib, and, and, yep. and all those lunatics, and, um, and many other things. Um, I'm sure he's not the only one who fits this well, description. Well, what, what happens is, is he is responsible for fake Republican liberal – that you know, what happens a lot of times, okay? This happened, this has been going on in New York for years, years and years and years. They'll put someone on the ballot. Sometimes they'll be a Republican. Sometimes they'll be a Tea Party candidate. Sometimes they'll be, a, they'll call themselves a conservative. And they're all liberals. And they're in there to get Republicans to vote for them, split the Republican vote, and then the Democrat wins the House seat. This has been very big. This guy's been, expo- he should be arrested. I mean, this is as fraudulent yep. as that white girl who was uh, said she was black and was heading up that NAACP chapter out in California, Rachel uh, Un- Unidol or something. What was her name? Rachel Dozell. Dozell. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is just as fake as a Democrat. Everything about Democrats is fake and fraudulent. They, lying, sneaky. They don't. Yeah. And and, you know, they run around telling you. That they represent the people. They re- if they represent the majority, why all the undercover nonsense like this? And uh, one last thing here uh, in this segment. I want to uh, highlight this again because this is not being talked about anywhere. It really is not. I, I talked about it this morning, so I'm not going to get into details. Just tell you. Mm-hmm. But I, I haven't seen this mentioned in the news. So Nikki Haley won the primary in D.C. Yeah. Okay, the Republican primary. Now – in, in the Republican primary in the District of Columbia, for those that don't know, the District of Columbia is like U.S. territories, Puerto Rico, Guam, et cetera, Virgin Islands. The territories in the District of Columbia, they get to vote in the primaries, but they don't get to vote in the general election. OK, like in Puerto Rico, they have a primary in Puerto Rico, but they can vote in the general election because they're not states. So anyway, Nikki Haley won the D.C. Prime, Republican primary. The District of Columbia is not a crossover primary. 
Okay, you have to be a registered Republican to vote in it. So it was all Republicans. Mm -hmm. You know, only 2,000 people voted in that primary. Total, total. 2,000 people. Let her enjoy her super little victory. She got 1,200 and something votes. Yeah, just she got 1,200 and something votes. That's nothing. Yeah. You know, and and she's parading around today. It's ridiculous. Like she wants, is she, is she sane? Is she loose? No. Is she crazed? Well, it's, you know, I didn't realize Colorado is uh, is uh, in Super Tuesday tomorrow. Yeah. Um, here's the states voting tomorrow. Alabama, Arkansas, California, yeah. Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont, and Virginia. And then there's caucuses in Alaska and Utah. So that's where the primaries are for Super Tuesday. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a it. big day. Yeah. Trump's going to win, of course. He has over 250 delegates. She has like 45 or something around there. DeSantis has like 18 or 9. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody who's voting for DeSantis or those people, it's just whatever. It's just stupid. But – after tomorrow, uh, yeah, clearly she's going to get her clock cleaned. And let's see how she rationalizes, especially after this verdict with the Supreme Court, where they cannot keep it. Now, what I'm guessing is that the liberals are going to try to get Trump off the main ballot next, because I don't think they can get him off the state's ballots now. Um, I think they're going to try to get him off the main can you imagine to try to get him off the main? They can't do that either. Because that, I mean, these people no, do not this, respect this, um, the law no, of no, the no. land. This ruling applies to that too. Good. Well, then, what are they going to try to do um, when they said we're going to go through legislation? Have, what does that mean exactly? They have um, that DC case is a January six case. So uh, they, if they could get a conviction in the next couple of months on a major federal case against Trump, that should take five years to try. Then maybe they'll try, but no, they're not. It's not going to work. Not and gonna work. and you know what? I hope he does. <clears throat> now a lot of these he can't do it on, but on the ones he can, and I know people are probably telling him he shouldn't do this. He should pardon himself. He should really pardon himself as soon as he takes the oath of Absolutely. office. Absolutely, I think and, he and, will. And stop all this. Can he just do stop it? all this? Does he have to wait till he takes the oath, or can he do it when he's elected? When he's president elect, he has no power. He has okay. to wait till he's uh, inaugurated. Of course, he'll do that. Yeah, just pardon himself. Do himself. that on day one, and, he should, yeah. and he'll say, <clears throat> "For the good of the country, we got to come." You know, this is ridiculous. These are all distractions. He'll definitely yeah. do that. Yeah, and 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 he and I know people will tell him he should. Oh, it looks bad. It looks bad. No, he should pardon himself. And you know what? He should pardon all the people around him too, like Peter Navarro and yeah. and Steve Bannon and all these all these poor souls that have just been harassed. Um, you have to pardon Bannon again, uh, you know, who have just been harassed because of their association with Trump. All right. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Take a magical journey with your child with the new book from mom and author Deepali Gupta, The Princess Night Adventures, A Journey Beyond Dreams, available on Amazon. The Princess Night Adventures, A Journey Beyond Dreams, brings the power of imagination to life. Join Piku, a young girl with a heart full of courage, as she ventures into her dreams to rescue a princess from the clutches of an octopus. With her mother's encouragement, she transforms into a brave princess knight, proving that within every child, Lies a hero ready to face their fears. This book teaches children the strength of imagination and the courage to confront their nightmares. Inspired by the timeless tales of friendship, love, kindness, and bravery, author Deepali Gupta, fueled by adventures with her daughter and the joy of creating castles, brings to life a story that will enchant and inspire young readers. The Princess Night Adventures, a journey beyond dreams, will instill confidence, strength, and a sense of uniqueness in every young reader. Empower our young heroes to triumph over any obstacle with The Princess Night Adventures, A Journey Beyond Dreams, available on Amazon and Kindle, paperback and Kindle Unlimited. This book is also perfect for teachers for their classroom reading collection. Order your copy right now. Are you tired of the endless search for affordable contact lenses? Well, your search is over. Say hello to LoveMyContacts.com, where premium vision meets unbeatable prices. LoveMyContacts.com isn't just any contact lens retailer. LoveMyContacts are powered by real optometrists and vision experts. Yes, that's right. Experts who know eyes and care about yours, ensuring you get the best fit from brands you trust, like AccuView, Bausch & Lohm, Alcon, and CooperVision. And guess what? 
contact. With LoveMyContacts.com's easy subscription service, forget about running low on contacts ever again. Just set it, forget it, and let your lenses come to you. Don't have your prescription handy? No problem. LoveMyContacts.com will retrieve it from your doctor's office, making your experience as seamless as possible. They have the most popular contacts at the best prices too, like AccuView Oasis, The Infuse, and Dailies. It's time to experience the LoveMyContacts.com difference. Visit the site right now, LoveMyContacts.com, and step into a world where quality meets convenience at prices you'll love. LoveMyContacts.com. In the new book from author Tom Withers, into a world where science blurs the line between human and machine, Human Cure, available on Amazon. In Human Cure, meet Ted and Amy, their brilliant scientist and divorce partners. They're racing against time to find a cure for cancer as they navigate disastrous experiments in a belligerent partnership. Their work and their hearts are tested in ways they've never imagined. They're thrown into a world where incredibly lifelike bots work alongside humans. They must overcome their personal and professional challenges to achieve their breakthrough. And when the stakes become personal for Amy, their quest takes on a whole new urgency. Human Cure is a sci-fi romance. It's also a story that explores the essence of humanity in an increasingly artificial world. Author Tom Withers dedicated Human Cure to his mother and for all those battling cancer. Proceeds from the book will be donated to cancer research. Human Cure from author Tom Withers. Available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, hardcover, and Kindle Unlimited. Order your copy right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. All right, welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. So President Trump, he had a, a press thing after the Supreme Court ruling at Mar-a-Lago, and there's this article here, and mm-hmm. I wanted to go through it. Um, Trump thanked the justices for working quickly and delivering a ruling that he yep. said would be remembered for 200 years. Oh, yeah. He's that, right about that. Yeah, especially if they do what uh, that idiot Jamie Raskin wants to do and try to overrule the Supreme Court in the— in the Congress. You know, I was reading, I was watching, um, you and I are watching a documentary on the Revolutionary War on History Hit. It's a really good app, and it, it, it's their British documentary, so it's always interesting to see the uh. British perspective on that. And Benjamin Franklin, I didn't realize, had such a, an important role. I mean, I knew he did, but I didn't realize to what extent that he was mm. living in England, and he was sending information to the Sons of Liberty and the people over here, letting them know what England was planning on doing to give them the heads up. Um, you know, and here we are talking about, people know about Benjamin Franklin 200 years later. I really believe with Trump because he, the meat, but I, you know, I worry though, but people will write books about this and look into this and I hope they're honest about it. And I think he will be uh, a figure remembered forever in the history of this country. Mm-hmm. And I think that these kinds of things will be remembered 200 years from now. Oh, yeah. I just hope that the liberals don't try to just brush it under the carpet and, and, and erase it from history. Well, which is what they, they I could see them it's, doing. It's not that they erase, they lie and propagandize well, they do and both. distort history. They act like it didn't happen or they distort. Yeah. I mean, look, they're taking down statues of people, even though, you know, they, they, they might have been questionable of character, but, you know, but like Confederate soldiers and things, obviously nobody agrees with slavery, but it's a part of our history. And I don't think statues should be removed or things should be renamed um, because some people can't handle it. It's a part of American history, good or bad. It needs to stay there. Um, And it's a learning thing. I mean, you know, there's been times when you've seen things with Emily and she'll ask you a question and it's like, a chance for you to talk to her about yeah. it and say things. So I just am curious, like what Trump said, will be member 200 years from now. I'm curious how things like this will be handled 200 years from well, now. Well, we you won't be I mean? here to know. We won't know. We won't, I know. But do you think people will be talking about him like Ben Franklin or writing books about the, him like the, Washington? No, the, or history books are written. It will be conservatives no, that write books. The the, the main history, I want to get back to this uh, thing that Trump talked about, but history books 
that are like part of like the official history and 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 school books and everything they're all written by liberal college professors they always have been in this country so our history is written by liberal democrats so they distort everything so you're not you know that's that's just uh, sadly the way conservatives will write books but they're not they're not going to be books that like if Mark Levin writes a book, every, it'll be a bestseller, but it'll right. be forgotten in a year. You know what I mean? It's not like a book that becomes like a a, a textbook. Yeah, we won't be here to know. It's too bad, yeah. but I'm just so I'm just so it's hard so to curious say. how he will be remembered. Well, and- I know how I'm going to remember him as the greatest president. Yeah, absolutely. Ever. So anyway, back to his uh, statement. So uh, Trump urged the Supreme Court to deliver him immunity in the next election case that it'll consider, arguing that any other decision would leave mm. him open to prosecution for military actions. You know, presidents make decisions every day they get people killed. Sometimes they order people being killed. And what Trump was talking about is, is that presidents don't have immunity. You can, um, you, you can uh, prosecute them for Any murders yeah. and, and all kinds of things. Uh, then he went on to say, Trump, you cannot take somebody out of the race. Uh, the voters can uh, take a person out of the race very quickly, but a court shouldn't be doing that. The Supreme Court it saw be that. Up to the voters, and and then he said, Trump then went on to say that he thinks that this ruling is going to be a unifying factor, and I, um, you know, I I think that's true. Um, what what the Supreme Court did was really take a lot of the steam out of what the what the Democrats were doing. Here. Oh, absolutely, yeah, totally deflated it. Totally I think, did. I think it'll have a ripple effect on these other cases and. What's the what's the other case he wants them to hear? Are they going to hear it? Uh, have they agreed to hear the no, other case? No, this is case the um, – th- that's the that case. thing. That, that case hasn't even started yet. Okay. Well, um, you know, they they might uh, take that one up too and uh, and make a ruling yeah, on Trump that. Said, Trump said that removing immunity from presidents would leave him and other presidents liable to prosecution for things such as taking out ISIS. And, and he's, yeah. he's uh, right about that. You know, a lot of times um, presidents also uh, order military actions that end up having collateral damage. Right. Civilians get killed. Innocent people get killed. Sometimes right. sometimes Americans get killed. So can you charge them with murder? If, if they don't have immunity, you um, – That's incredible. You, you, you can. You know, it's very, it's very dangerous because of their hatred of Trump. It's really scary how – Far liberals are willing to go. They're not even thinking in terms of how this can affect the country they don't care. or the future. They are so frustrated because they are not, they're like children having a temper mm-hmm. tantrum, like two year olds on the floor kicking their legs and crying because they cannot stop this man. It is absolutely keeping them up at night. They're obsessed with it. They think about it nonstop. You know, they talk about it nonstop. Dream about Trump. Think about Trump. Not, it's, it's in their mind. You know, he lives there rent free. And they are not getting the satisfaction they want. They get these tiny, tiny little victories in their mind. But they still haven't, like, you know, he did get arrested. That was a victory for them. But then Trump turned it around. Yep. And, and, and his mugshot was so good. That it was, you could see in the news that they were like, it was so anticlimactic for them. And it only rallied people behind Trump even more. He looked uh, like know. a badass yeah, in that and, picture, you know, didn't he? He and, looked like a man, very resolute and like. And I'm, I'm, wearing, you know, I'm wearing a t-shirt with his mugshot on it now. And, yeah, exactly. And, he's he's you know, a folk hero. And you know, over the weekend at one of the rallies that President Trump had over the weekend, he said, I'm a, a political dissident. And he is. That's and, right. Today, uh, Trump, he said um, he blamed uh, Biden for his legal challenges yep. and said that he's using judges and prosecutors. Uh, That's exactly I guess right. It, and he and, talked about the connection with Fannie Willis, how uh, there was a guy who – a prosecutor who worked for Biden and left that job to work for Fannie. He, he talked about that link mm-hmm. and how, how that proves – that the Biden administration is involved in that case. Yep. And that's that link is that guy. And he mentioned that yeah, that's guy. That's the guy we talked Di- about that uh, guy. We talked about him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. The, the DeSantis guy. His the DeSantis guy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. D.I. Santis is how he uh, spells his name. 
Well, you know, the thing about um, everything that's that's uh, uh, going on, I noticed, though, when when President Trump was talking today and, and I don't know how many other people picked up on this. By the way, having Fox News on for the first time in a long time, Martha McCallum's gotten major cosmetic work on her neck. Has she? If you look at her neck, before she Let was looking look. like she was 98 years old. She, and, she had a really bad neck. And um, she was wearing scarves and turtlenecks all the time. She's such a pretty lady. And, but the, um, neck, the neck and the hands, especially if you work out, yeah. what happens is if you work out a lot, and I know she is big into jogging and stuff. She's talked about it. If you work out a lot, you get um, bulging veins. See, look at her neck. Her neck looks better. She's had work done to her neck. Maybe a little Botox. You get your veins bulge, More and then and that with age, the neck and the and the hands give away your age. So, but anyway, if you if you watched uh, President Trump today at Mar-a-Lago, he he, um, the words that he used were a little yeah. different. If you noticed, and I don't know how many of you noticed it because you know. When I tell you, it'll, it'll stand out to you. And we've been talking a lot about how he's running a different campaign. He's talking differently. He's not picking petty fights with people yeah. and things. Um, he he didn't say he didn't refer to Biden as Biden. He called him President Biden and the president. And he did that several times today, yeah. which is a little unusual for him. No, he he's you know? calmer. And even and, and even uh, they they we watched his speech on Fox. And I, w- I watched Outnumbered after a little bit, and Kaylee McEnany was on it, and she really praised him. I know he's insulted her, but she praised him a lot. She said he's much more measured. She said he's very different now than he used to be, and she said he's much calmer, mm-hmm. and he's not getting into the these stupid back and forths. He seems more focused and resolute. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that kind of thing— what Trump has been through, it changes a person. Yeah. And it's changed him for the better, if that's even possible. Mm-hmm. It has given him perspective. And all the naivety that he went into 2016 with, he that's gone. Mm-hmm. That's gone. He knows exactly what he's walking into now. He knows exactly who he's dealing with. He didn't know this before. He thought the media was his friend. And that they, you know, they were his buddy. And and he was like so upset. You could tell that they didn't embrace him. Now he doesn't give a damn. And he knows what they're all about. And he is absolutely laser focused on fixing the country. He is not getting distracted by anything else. And I like it. I got to tell you, because the one thing I didn't like about Trump in the first term is that he got too distracted by the media and and got into the back and forth with Acosta. It was fun to watch, but after a while it got tiring and boring. And I'm like, just don't worry about it. Just focus on the job. They, and he is not going to be that way anymore. I can promise you he is going to go in. He's got four years. He's going to kick ass and take names. That's how it's going to be. And then the daily beast, which is liberal jerks. They had a, a, a story today about Trump having dinner with Nazis. Oh, and and I want to you, you I want to ask you guys listening does this make sense this Nazi thing they're talking about is this Nick Fuentes oh, N- yeah. Nick Fuentes is a nobody he he's made a big deal by the liberals and somehow Nick Fuentes got close to Kanye that was and, so long and, ago and I know it why was, are they talking it, about it it, now? it was it was brought up apparently on Faulkner's show today on Fox they they said in the article and. Kanye showed up at Mar-a-Lago unannounced yeah. and, and knocked and said, hey, can I see the and, – and, and Trump let him in because, you know, he's a celebrity. He knows him. Yeah. And he had Nick Fuentes with him, and Trump didn't even know who the guy was. No. And so now they're saying he's meeting with Nazis. It's ridiculous. Um, what now, about Joe now, Biden being at Robert Byrd's funeral? Yeah. And giving the eulogy. Well, okay. And well, he was in the clan. Here's, here's the thing. Okay, Trump didn't know who Nick Fuentes was. And I'll tell you, if Nick Fuentes walked in the front door of our house right now, I wouldn't know who he no, was. Neither. But he's there with Kanye West, who's who's a black man. Why would you think someone that's friends with a black man is a Nazi? Nazis don't like black people, okay? They don't like anyone who's not Aryan. And, and oh, to, oh you, you, who is this guy? He must be a Nazi. Why would you even assume that some guy who is with a one, – well – one of the most famous black men in the world, Kanye West, is a Nazi. Because, Brian, it makes no sense. the left have really diluted. They're insane. And I mean diluted like when you dilute something with water. 
they have really diluted the meaning of those words. Yeah. Okay. Now everything's racist. Everybody's a Nazi. If you even, uh, you know, like Charlie Kirk, what he said about the affirmative action with pilots, Mm -hmm. you know, now he's a Nazi or a bigot or something like that. They really have diluted the true meaning of racism and Nazism these days. So it's such a broad spectrum now. So many things fall under that umbrella because they they throw that word around. You know, I was I was watching The Housewives of Beverly Hills. That's the only one I, I watch. And there's one black woman on the cast, Garcelle. Uh, she's an actress. I like her. But she was having a discussion with this white lady, Dorit, who's Jewish. And they were like arguing over something. And Dorit said to her, I feel like you're attacking me. That's yeah. all she said. And she was attacking her. All of a sudden, Garcelle, who's black, goes into this whole thing, how you're a privileged white woman. You shouldn't talk to black women that way and this and that. And you're a racist. And all this stuff. It's just incredible to me how people can just label somebody like that because they challenge them a little bit. And that's how these young people are. And the liberals have thrown those words and those meanings around so much that young people really don't even know what real racism is. They don't, they didn't, you know, our parents lived through it. Okay. My best friend, her parents are from Alabama. They were in high school in the sixties. Okay. They lived through that. Let me tell you. And they told me about it when I was, when I was at their house in high school, they lived that stuff. Young people today, they don't have that connection Mm -hmm. unless their grandparents talk about that. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's like when we were young, my grandparents would talk to me about World War II or the Depression or things like that. These young people, Mm -hmm. their whole, I don't think their parents even discuss things with them. They learn everything about life on TikTok now. And they really don't understand how bad things were from during, you know, the Civil War and after up until, you know, recently, things are so equal now. It's actually tilted in reverse in some ways mm-hmm. with affirmative action and stuff like that. But they dilute the meaning of all these words. So well, they don't this, have any more This meaning. thing with Nick Fuentes, okay? For, yeah, that's okay. a prime example. Now, now Nick Fuentes, he's, he's like 25 years old or something. He's a nobody. And, he, and I know he said a lot of Nazi-like things. I get it, okay? He's a wannabe. But, but he is a nothing. And I know right. I'll, I'll hear from people. He's not a nothing. No, he's a nothing. Right. And, and what happens is you have these fringe lunatics that are right. nobodies. It used to be Fred Phelps. It used to be David Duke. Now it's Nick Fuentes. Yes. And the and the media give them credibility by always propping them up and making these nobodies and losers somebodies. You understand what I mean? Well, and Nick Fuentes wants to be a somebody. So a lot of people say things just to go viral, even if they don't mean it. Yeah. They say things I, just I, so I, people I wouldn't, talk about it. I don't know if he means it or not. I don't know too much about him. I don't know anything but, about But him. what I know is this, okay? He's a troll. He's a nobody. And if the media wouldn't stop elevating him, this this Nazi exactly. kid would would have to get a job at uh, the old Navy and get a real job. And we right? also know that Trump did not invite him to his house. No, he was with Kanye exactly. West. In fact, he didn't even invite Kanye. No, he just showed up at the door. Exactly, uninvited. Well, you know what? Kanye won't be allowed in anymore. I'm sure nope. after after that happened. Now I want to yeah, tell you guys that the uh, free shipping offer with our promo code Kane at checkout K A N E on all my pillow products continues. Okay, and uh, that's free shipping site wide on uh, every item in the store, no matter how large or how small. Plus, you get the special deal. Okay, so whatever the discount is, like the My Pillow My Slippers are ninety dollars off right now with our promo code Kane at checkout. You get the ninety dollars off and free shipping, and that's site wide. So go to mypillow.com and use our promo code Kane K A N E at checkout. And remember, when you do that, you're supporting all of the content I'm connected to. Right, the podcast, my YouTube channel the radio show, everything I do, and you're supporting Mike Lindell and the good people at MyPillow. So go to MyPillow.com, use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. The free shipping will end without notice. And you know what? I won't even get notice. It's just, I'll find Yeah, they that. just tell you. It'll, it'll just happen. So take They have a great sale on the slippers right now, too. $90 off. Great. I mean, yeah. that's, that's really yeah, good. $90 off plus free shipping. Yeah. So uh, take advantage of the free shipping offer while it lasts. Promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at mypillow.com. 
Discover the heartbeat of Detroit with Damaged Friendships, a unique streetwear brand that goes beyond fashion. The pieces are more than just clothing. They're stories woven from the heart. Damaged Friendships believe in repairing broken bonds and creating pieces that resonate with your essence. Each garment carries the weight of a story worth sharing, and Damaged Friendships is here to help you articulate yours. Their passion is forged into every stitch, making each piece timeless. From hoodies to beanies, joggers to tees, and shorts, explore the unique collection at damagefriendships.com. Connect with them on Instagram at RealBDon and Damage Friendships CO. And on TikTok at Damage Friendships. At damagefriendships.com, not only will you find incredible items for yourself, but the perfect gifts too. Embrace the story and start shopping at damagefriendships.com with pieces created from the heart. AI. It's what everyone's talking about. But when it comes to AI, where do you even begin? That's easy. AI Exploria. At AI Exploria, you'll find the largest collection of AI tools on the web. They have over 5,000 tools. Everything's organized in categories, including the 10 most popular AI tools by business. So you can find the AI tool that's best for you fast. AI Exploria is available on smartphones and tablets. And the platform is updated every day with the latest AI tools. And AI Exploria. Exploria is absolutely free. That's right, free. Whether you're on the hunt for the latest AI tools or the most practical AI solutions for your business, AI Exploria have everything you need and they're constantly updating the site. Start exploring the world of AI right now and join this community of forward thinkers and innovators online at AIExploria.com slash EN. That's A-I-X-P-L-O-R-I-A. AIExploria.com slash EN. And begin your AI adventure, AIExploria.com slash EN, where your AI journey begins. AIExploria.com slash EN. Are you truly living the life you've always dreamed of? Or do past traumas hold you back from achieving your fullest potential? You're not alone. Discover the support and guidance you need on the Redhead Reveal podcast with Jen Pinkerton. Jen Pinkerton is a seasoned psychotherapist, coach, and sexologist. She's on a mission to foster deeper connections in your relationships. She explores the intricate worlds of attachment, inner child work, and trauma, revealing their profound impact on our well-being and our ability to flourish. Join the movement towards healing healing, understanding, and thriving in your personal and professional relationships. Don't let another day pass you by, leaving you feeling disconnected. Add Redhead Reveal with Jen Pinkerton to your podcast playlist right now. Available on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Share the podcast on all your social media so your friends can tune in too. Your journey to a more connected and fulfilled life starts right now. Redhead Reveal on Spotify and Apple Podcast. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Now, when Trump had his um, statement today at Mar-a-Lago, CNN cut away while in the middle of him talking. Of because course. they And they said, because it was live, they said, well, now he's saying some things we got to fact check. It's not up for the news to fact check the no. news. It is up f- for them right. it, there to show the news as it happens and let the viewer decide. Yeah, uh, no, now, they don't do that Now, anymore. this is a, a clip of President Trump from Mar-a-Lago today. The other thing I say to President Biden, close the borders now. This is not sustainable for our country. It's not sustainable for our cities. Our country is under siege. This is a violent thing that you've done. And many people are dying. Many, many people are dying. They die on the trip up. They die going through the border. And they die in our country. Yeah, and Americans die too. He also said, uh, he said, the policies are there in place that I put there. That you don't that you don't need approval from Congress or, or a new bill or yeah. more money. He said the policies are there. You just have to enact them and enable well, them and you're ready to go. But he doesn't want to do that because Biden has had give, been given his marching orders by China and and that's what he's gonna follow well, through with. What Trump was talking about there, you know, this goes back to what we were saying earlier, how 
he's talking about things in a different way. What he was he is when he was talking about there, he was talking about the illegals that are dying. He wasn't talking about Lincoln Riley in that part and Americans that are being killed. He was talking about the illegals dying on the way here. It's a major humanitarian crisis that Biden yeah. is creating. And like Kathy said, Biden can't stop it if he wanted to because he's already cashed the check from China to do it. That's right. So he can't. He's, he, he's the, already made his deal. Hunter's already blown the money on hookers and blow, and he can't. It, so the money's gone. <laughs> exactly. He can't give it back. And and he's got yeah. it. And and you know that's the that's the area when CNN cut away. And I I agree that yeah. this Supreme Court decision is is most definitely a major major unifier in the in the country. Yes, and it it, it, it is a death blow to the left and their little schemes. And somebody said that the Supreme Court is going to hear the immunity case. And I think that they, I don't think that'll be unanimous, but I think Trump will win that case as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we listened to the, I, I went to the Supreme Court when I was in eighth grade. I went to Washington on a field trip. And that was one thing I really remember. It was fascinating. We, you can walk in, I don't know if they let you do it anymore, yeah, you can still but go back on. then you would walk in the back and then you'd get to sit there for like 10 minutes and then you'd have to leave. They, that's how they brought in the tour groups. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing to go in there and see all of them at the front. They're very high up in that little semicircle. And I was very impressed by that. And it's really very imposing. And I remember seeing that was pretty cool. But I don't think he's going to get a unanimous uh, That's okay. vote on the immunity. Kathy, very but few I things think do. he will win that case. Very few things get and they, unanimous. Yeah, and they need to take it up very quickly and settle these things. And I think they understand that. They need to settle these things so the country can unify and get back on track. And I think the Fannie Willis thing, um, I'm not sure if that judge is going to remove her, but regardless, it's going to fall apart mm-hmm. because uh, she's crooked and there's and, that's and, for sure. and they don't want you to know about this connection with Biden. So I think that's going to fall apart too. And I think the, the this thing in New York with the money, it's all going to fall apart. And it's amazing to me Um you know, liberals, most of them are atheists, so they don't understand this. And the Bible talks about, Jesus talks about how if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you will not understand how this works. They don't understand. And if, you, if you're if you a Christian, you see it. Trump has God on his side. Mm-hmm. And liberals and atheists will think I'm crazy, but it is a fact. Okay? Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, if you read the Bible, all the people God has called— we're definitely not perfect. I mean, David killed people. Paul was not a perfect man. He crew, he went after Christians. Moses killed a man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not saying Trump killed anybody, but no. but God always called men and only women. terrorists. Yeah, yeah. God always called people that you wouldn't necessarily. Nobody was perfect. Okay. Um, but God is on this man's side, and I think he's very religious, and. The fact that all these attacks, they, this is pure evil coming after Trump. Yeah. This is pure mm-hmm. evil coming from the left. Oh, yeah. And if you don't see that, you got blinders on. And the fact that this man is just taking arrow after arrow and they're bouncing off of him, to me, just shows that this man has is the protection of God. And it is so important to pray for this man every day. Day. I don't pray for Trump. Sometimes I forget, but I pray for him a lot. I've got to pray for him every day, but I do pray for him often in my prayers. And I'll just say something like, just please keep protecting Trump. This is an evil world. It's a fallen world. And the mm-hmm. evil <clears throat> people in this country are after him. And let me tell you, th- the fact that there's so many people after him shows you how right he really is. Oh yeah. It's a miracle. And it should show you because you really got to look back and say to yourself, what is, why are they mm-hmm. after this guy so hard? Yeah. I mean, he hasn't done anything that they just because, don't like because, him because it's the donors, because he's, it, well, the yeah, because the they're state. evil. They can't control him. He's a beacon but of light know, and a beacon of hope. And they want to now, put that. Now out. this thing with the immunity case, it is very unusual for the yeah. Supreme court to have nine O decisions. Very rare. Okay, but a lot of times when it's not nine to zero, like it's seven to two or something, they they do that so that the other side can get, you know, they can make like a devil's argument. Just because you don't get all nine doesn't mean that all nine are not agreeing. And the immunity case. you think so, really? Yeah, they just do devil's advocates sometimes, I think, yes. 
Um, the the um, the immunity case, he's going to win too because I, I, yeah, for sure. You know, there's no statute of limitation on murder in this country. So if they don't have immunity, they can. You could go back and charge he, President Carter is the oldest living president. You could go back and charge President Carter. Yep. For deaths of things that he was involved in, okay, or George Bush for George they him W. A Bush, war criminal, exactly. So all pr- and and by the way, and, and Obama, Obama, remember he took out that Taliban leader and killed an American girl that was his sex slave at the time. I'm, yep. I'm sorry, I forgot her name, but you guys remember I'm talking. Yep. So uh, the past presidents could be charged with all kinds of crimes if this immunity is not held up by the court, and of course future presidents too. Well, so, not to mention if that if that became a thing. It it's would not. set a horrible precedent, and it. Who would want to become president? Then? Nobody if, would. If you have that hanging over your head, you would be able to be completely controlled. I mean, a lot of them are controlled anyway. But if that was yeah. the way it was, it's not going to happen. You would have zero f- flexibility and zero freedom. How can as they call in an airstrike? They could completely control. Yeah, I, you. I give you an example. Um, although he's he's. He, you know, he's, he's long gone, but Ronald Reagan, when he bombed um, Libya, right? Yeah. Because Gaddafi was backing terrorism and he blew up that nightclub in Germany and there were some American servicemen killed. One of the targets was Gaddafi's house, one of his houses, and Gaddafi's daughter was killed. And when presidents d- order military strikes, there's all kinds of collateral damage like that. If yep. Reagan were alive and presidents don't have immunity, he could be charged with the death of Gaddafi's daughter. And you understand what I mean from that um, airstrike way back yeah. when? So that's, that's going to, he's going to win that one too, because yep. presidents can't be president if they don't have immunity as president. It's fascinating. We were listening to the Supreme Court discuss this. So, and it was fascinating to me. They played the audio. Obviously, there was no video um, of the hearing with the Colorado thing. And if you didn't get a chance to hear it, I would definitely listen to the next one regarding the immunity because when I heard them talking and questioning, I knew it was going to be unanimous. I said even the liberals are agreeing that this is crazy. And uh, it, it was really fascinating. And I have to say uh, I was very impressed by the Supreme Court. They're all very intelligent people, and they definitely know the law, all of them. And uh, so, I, I, you know, the fact – that they ruled this way just gives me a lot of confidence um, yeah. in, in our American system. Absolutely. But I have no confidence in these politicians, especially the ones who want to now circumvent the Supreme Court and try to keep going with this. I mean, they just can't – they just – liberals can just never stop trying to F things up. I now, mean, can they ever no. just stop trying to F no, the because, world up? No, because they know better than My the God. people. They know better than we do. It's asinine. And they're saving us from ourselves. That's they right. Think. They really believe that. Now, I want to thank our, our Patreon supporters. And remember, those of you that are Patreon supporters, there's a lot of exclusive content that Kathy and I both put up on the Patreon page that only Patreon supporters have access to, including commercial-free editions of all our podcast episodes, but there's a lot of other content up there too, okay? And if you would like to support the program by becoming a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of this and every episode. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K-Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, and George. Thank you so much. These are our top Patreon supporters. And again, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this and every episode. So um, Hillary Clinton, of course, she's been doing um, interviews today talking about this and, it, you know, talk about a, a sad, bitter woman. You know, she is just a sad, oh. bitter woman. Yes, and she is. And, you know, the thing about her, you know, you're talking about God earlier. Hillary Clinton spent her entire life destroying people's lives for her, for the little bit of personal gain she could get out of it in her career. And she only got so far, right? 
She only got so far, and she just couldn't get to that presidential no. thing. But you know, if if Hillary, you just and I, was, just wasn't meant to be uh, because she's evil, and uh, she and the the penalty for her evil doing was not becoming president. But you and I talked about this. If she would have become president, it probably would have been a very uneventful presidency. Yeah, I think so. She would have done nothing. She would have just walked around and had meetings and took pictures. And like, I'm great. I'm the first woman, but never really did anything. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like I, Kamala. I don't, think, I don't think it would have would have been anything special. I mean, being the first female president, though, is a big deal. Yeah. She just wanted that mark in history, which I understand. I mean, that's huge to be that. Yeah, well, she and, didn't get uh, it. But no, it, it, it eluded her. It wasn't her meant and, to be. Uh, and yeah, yeah, thankfully. She didn't deserve it. No, but at she, all. If anybody was more undeserving, I don't know. I mean, she just did not deserve to have she, that win. It, the, the Clintons are terrible people. You know, I, a lot of people forget what it was like when they were around, but so many things came out about them. Yeah. There were so many people around them from Arkansas that died under strange circumstances. I mean, they're like mobsters, the Clintons. They yeah. they really are. Well, they're, it's a, according to what you said about Newscom the other day, the, the, they're all connected to the mafia somehow. You know, with with San Francisco, yeah. with the I mean, the Chinese mafia. Uh, New scum has the Chinese. He made a deal <laughs> with the Chinese triad triad in in San Francisco. Yeah, and that's okay. You know, that's I mean, just incredible. That's okay. But I'll tell you this: Donald Trump was cleared by the Supreme Court. He is not an insurrectionist. He did not take part in an insurrection, and he did not lead an insurrection. Because if he had done any of those things, the Supreme yeah. Court would not have ruled in his favor. Well, tomorrow is Super Tuesday. There's 854 delegates. Really? I think they you just showed on sure? the news over 850 oh, that's a lot. delegates up or whatever they call them uh, to win. Yep. Uh, so I am predicting that Trump's going to get about 750 to 800. I've Nikki no, Haley I've, will get some. Yeah. I don't know. Do those states split? Not all, not all states are winner okay. take all. So she might get, uh, you know, maybe 50. She could she could shock us and win a state, but it doesn't matter. You know, Ted Cruz. In well, the, she did win D.C. In the 2016 Republican primary, Ted Cruz won Texas, if, if I remember correctly. Well, yeah, I would hope. I remember he won Iowa. Ted Cruz won Iowa for sure. She hasn't won a state and he yet. Beat, he beat Trump. If she doesn't win one state— Tomorrow, which yeah. DC doesn't count. I don't count. think it's not DC. A state. I don't count that. It's not a state. It's not a state. I don't think she will win one state. That is my prediction. I do not think she will win one state. That would state. be beautiful. Um, if she doesn't win one state, she is going to have a hell of a time justifying her staying in the race, and she's just going to human. She's going to have to drop out. I mean, if she doesn't win one state, Brian, how can she? How can she keep a straight face? Yeah, and stay in the race if she can't even win one state <clears throat> by then. You got how many states tomorrow? 12, 15? Yeah. There's already been three or four. I mean, that's, that's what, a third of the country? I mean, it, it, if she hasn't won one state by then, come on. Yeah. I mean, come on. Now, um, <laughs> it's just crazy. Now, listen, guys. I'm excited about it. Um, next month, the end of next month is, is when I leave on the cruise. And yeah. I, and I want to uh, uh, tell you guys, I will be live streaming on my YouTube channel from the cruise. And uh, on the last cruise, I told um, I told our daughter on the last cruise, like the last day or two, I said, you know, I said on the next cruise, I am not going to drink alcohol. I'm just going to drink like ginger ale, Coke and Pepsi and mostly water. And I told her because I, I don't really drink except on the cruises. Right. And and I have a good time. I'm, I mean, I'm responsible, you know, but. Um, I said, you know what? I said, I might have a better time if I don't have any alcohol. I think you would. So I've got the full drink package, but you know, but they, you know, the, the cruise line gives that to me, but I, I, just because I have the drink package doesn't mean I have to drink alcohol. So you can't like just be moderate. Like you have to like go full throttle on the cruise. You can't just have like a pina colada once in a while. It's either all or nothing. Well, I, I, on the last. It's true. Brian does not drink it. 
normally. You, I, you very are, rarely. Very, very rarely, very little drink. We have. Um, and I don't drink at all. Yeah, we have some alcohol here at home, and it's been sitting in the fridge and on top of the fridge and in cabinets yeah, for like a year. Yeah, we have like, like wine. Year. It's like if people come over. Yeah, and the, yeah we, don't, we don't really That's drink. Yeah. But, uh, I, you know, on the last cruise, and I saw some people on the ship that were just so hammered, and I thought to myself, you know, I think I might have a better time if I didn't have anything to drink. So I'm. I, I think you would too. So I am going to um, try, try it and see and see if I have a better. Because I know time. normally on every cruise you don't follow that rule. I'm going to do it this time. I I I don't think you'll be able to do it because no, everybody tells I, me. I that. Think, Everyone tells me that. I think you you're with the guys. And you're all, you know, lining up the tequila shots. I do like tequila shots. And having shots. a good time. Yeah. And there is no way you're going to walk away from that if they line it up and they're like, come on, Brian. There is no way you're not going to do it. I just, you like your tequila shots. Well, you know, what I it, don't what see it, that happening. What had happened is we took a tour I don't have uh, a couple weeks ago. We took a yeah. tour of the ship that we're going on, the Celebrity Beyond. And the, we took a tour because- we we have to see all the venues we're going to be at on right. our, our events and eyeball them. And we may not like it. We may want to change. And we did. We, we saw some things and we changed them around to different venues and things because I'm, I'm like, I don't like that room. No, we don't want to do it in there. There was one room that we were going to be in. I'm like, no, this is not a fun room. We're right. not going to do it here. We move things around. But we had some drinks and I uh, had not eaten and I got and I went there right from the show in the morning. So I got off the air at nine and went right to the ship. And we we were drinking, and I had not eaten. And yeah. the next morning on Sat, that was Friday. I woke up on the Saturday after, and I, I was hungover, I guess. And I just and I didn't even have that much to drink, you know. And um, I felt awful. And I was like, you know what? I am not going to feel like this for the eight the days key on the cruise. Is to drink water. While you're drinking, I did that last time. Every drink, I that drink a bottle help, of water between. Right, I'm going to go. Get dehi- you don't get dehydrated. I'm going to try much. to go and not be intoxicated. Now, did our at daughter all. drink on the cruise? Yeah, she did a lot. A little bit. No, or just a Emily's little bit. 25, so. just a little bit. Yeah, she's not a big drinker, no. but she had like a few cocktails. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But can't you just like be moderate? I might sip some stuff. You know, we have I mean, cocktail have a parties runner or a pina colada or something. We, I might drink like you know. Fruity drinks and stuff like yeah, that, fun I mean, drinks. Not uh, not to do the tequila shots and the- I'll believe it when I and see And the, it. you know, the Jägermeister and all that stuff going on. I don't have to do all that. <laughs> God, that stuff's awful. Yeah, I know. I haven't had that since college. I know. So, but but uh, anyway, <laughs> um, I just want to let you guys know, when I'm on the cruise, it's uh, we leave on a Saturday yeah. and return the following Sunday. So I'll, I'll be off the radio for five days, yeah. but I will be live streaming on YouTube- while I'm on the cruise, which I don't normally do, but I am going to do it this time. Are you going to have that Starlink or this the, the time internet? Or? Yeah, the internet on the cruise ship is Elon Musk's Starlink. That'll be nice. And it's it had it on the last one. It's very very good. Yeah. And uh, I didn't live stream last time because well, I was just I wasn't up in the mornings because I was up drinking all night. So I'm not well, going to be doing that so this maybe, time. I, I think you should really try. I don't know if you can, but I think you should try. I think it might be nice. This is our fifth cruise, and I've not gone without alcohol on any of them. So this will be the first one. Try to set yourself up. Exactly. Try to get yourself mentally prepared. Exactly. But anyway, I wanted you guys to know, though, I will be live streaming on YouTube on the on the ship, and uh, I'll be making some YouTube videos and stuff while I'm on there, too, and in the different islands and everything, and it's a great time. Mm-hmm. Listen, we're out of time for today. We'll be back next time. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife, and 